more breaking inputs on the situation unfolding in Bangladesh. Let's, uh, in fact, also get you uh, more details on the uh, developments here in India. Now, the BSF has issued a high alert along the India-Bangladesh border. BSF has also increased the deployment in the area. Train services, both passenger and freight services going towards Bangladesh border areas have been suspended. The BSF DG is also camping in Kolkata to monitor the situation. Meghalaya has imposed night curfew along a border with Bangladesh. External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar briefed Prime Minister Narendra Modi about the crisis in Bangladesh. Times Now Group Editor-in-Chief Navika Kumar spoke to foreign, uh, former Foreign Secretary Harsh Shringla. Let's listen into the analysis. Mr. Harsh Shringla, if you say that BNP, the Jamate Islami are on one side, uh, Sheikh Hasina was always a friend of India. Uh, do you think it's going to be challenging times for us uh, to have uh, any great understanding with the, uh, any interim government which has these two elements, uh, Jamate Islami as well as the BNP, and then uh, uh, Pakistan exulting, China won't be far behind. What does this mean for India? Yeah, no, I, I think, as I said, it's a difficult situation. It could have been worse if that impasse had continued and there was more violence and more, I would say, uh, you know, uh, bloodshed. But uh, in a certain sense, it is somewhat controlled now. Now the situation is to engage those who are taking decisions and uh, to make it clear to them that, uh, you know, in order for a viable relationship, which is, I think, very important both for Bangladesh and India. I mean, if you look at it from Bangladesh's perspective, I think cooperation of India is critical. So we need to engage them informally. I'm not saying formally, and I'm sure there are challenge, cha channels of communication open with all concerned and to convey to them our serious uh, concerns and our suggestions as to how they should proceed further on this and how, uh, you know, it could uh, sort of lead to a situation where they could restore uh, the democratic process and bring back. And as, and, and as uh, I think our external affairs minister has said, we are looking at all options very actively. So clearly, you know, uh, the meeting that prime minister has taken has looked at some of these issues and, and, and clearly uh, there are options for us that uh, would enable us to retrieve uh, you know, what is... Uh... But I, I was also reading, you've said a lot of support is coming in from exiles abroad. Uh, who are you referring to? And, uh, uh, you know, for, for India, all options are being explored, but what are these options? I think as of now, we need to uh, remain engaged with all of our friends uh, in Bangladesh. We need to keep our channels of communication open especially with the armed forces and the military that is uh, that has assumed that power. Even if they appoint an interim administration, it will be overseen by the military. So it is something that we need to get into that uh, that uh, process and, and try and, uh, you know, engage them on this. I mean, these decisions haven't been taken fully and we need to be able to input on them. Uh, by exiles, I'm talking about those, uh, you know, uh, Bangladeshi, nationals who are outside the country, but who form very, very, uh, I would say, Cozy serious relation. lobbying groups, lobbying groups with the Western powers, uh, mainly, uh, you know, Jamaat-e Islami is a very strong uh, lobbying power in some of these countries. And they lobby those governments to take stands and positions against uh, their own government in Bangladesh. So these are, these are groups that have been very active in the social media, active in, in that political space and trying to create a narrative that uh, that uh, we cannot fully share